Lawrence W. Moore, and welcome to this edition of Sunday Night Synthesis. This is Series 2, Episode 7. So this Sunday is Sunday, July the 9th, 2017. And what I'm going to be doing in this episode is first making an announcement, and then second, I am going to be playing around with a software called Modular by Softube. It's basically a VST instrument that is like a virtual Eurorack setup. And the modules in it sound pretty good. And so I'm going to be working with it a little bit, showing you some things about it. And we'll have some fun experimenting with that. But before we get to that, I just wanted to make an announcement that uh, those of you who haven't seen the latest Learning Synthesis with Pure Data episode, Series 2, Episode 4, um, I have fixed a glitch in the LWM rack system whereby before when using the pitch bend wheel or modulation wheel you would get some stuttering uh, that no longer occurs because i fixed the way in which it saves parameters to the user everything will look the same and work the same as before but now you won't have any stuttering in audio so um, you may want to check out that episode if you've been following the lwm rack series those of you who haven't gotten there yet well, don't worry about that when you get there. <laughs> it's been taken care of. So anyway, without any further ado, Ra Crafty and I are going to do a little soft tubing. Okay, so here we are in Reason. I loaded up uh, Modular as a VST in the browser window here. So you go through instruments now that uh, Reason 9.5 has VSTs. Got the modular VST in right here. And so here it is in the rack. And we have a track for it down here. Let me open it up. Well, what I put in first, going from left to right, is first of all the sync module here because I'm using a step sequencer over here and no that's not the sync module this is the sync module this is the MIDI module where I basically have the CV which is pitch going over here to the CV end of the VCO then I have the gate going over I believe it's over here to the ADSR. Yeah, there it is. It's going into the ADSR. And then um, the sync I have going into this five-step sequencer here. It's a five-step looper. And uh, the clock in is going here on quarter note values. So the quarter note is what triggers it to go ahead each step. I could have it go to 8th note, 16th note, so forth. Okay, and I have our step sequencer here set to um, quantize, first of all. And then I have it set to a range. And um, here I have it set to a loop. So that way, it's a five length loop. I could shorten it. Uh, because there are five steps, I could shorten it to four, for example. But basically, now, with the um, five-step loop going on, what I did is I sequenced a little line here. Got to move this out of the way. And uh, I basically have the loop flags up so we can hear it. Loop. Is a little bit too strong so I'm going to de-emphasize it here with the velocity 
go to the beginning. I know this is small, hard to see, but I know this is the first note right here, so I'm going to take its velocity and shave it down a little more. There we go. That was just bugging me. But in any case, what I have synthwise here is the CV out of the step sequencers going into the filter module here. So here's the CV1 end of the filter, which basically controls the cutoff frequency. And I have a 48 dB um, low pass filter on it, and the output of that goes into the amplifier here. And then we have the uh, CV out, or it just says output, but the output of the ADSR goes into the CV in of the amplifier, so that way the ADSR, as I click notes, is giving a shape to the notes over here. For example, I could shorten the release time. time quick maybe make the decay time short too quick of an attack time so here we go. there we go so that's the ADSR there shaping the amp the amplifier here and the uh, actual output from the filter goes in directly so basically signal coming out from here, sawtooth into the filter. The filter's 48 dB low pass output is going into here, to the amplifier, and here's where the ADSR controls it. And the ADSR is basically receiving um, the gate inputs from the MIDI in over here. So basically we have a little synth like this. But the um, actual cutoff frequency is being controlled by this. So with that, the clock needs to be running. So in other words, it needs to be playing. If I, for example, let me minimize this. Uh, take off loop. Click here. Put my time cursor here and press play. Now you'll hear... The sequence of the uh, the filter frequency basically on each note I play. Since I have a recorded line here, that's what I'm basically using as the example. And so I was able to make a pattern out of it. And the beauty of Reason, and now that it has VSTs, is for example, you can flip it around. And I have like all these eight CV ins here that are assignable. And they're assignable to the different controls in um, modular. So I can on the fly assign those. It does take here CV and gate in. So if I was using this with like an arpeggiator um, or a matrix step sequencer and reason, I could control it. But here's the eight assignable CV ins. You could say what parameter they go to here. And then to see which parameter is what, because they just say assignable. When you open up modular, I found the best way to find out what their number is, is hit this remote. Then you click a control that you want to control, like this emphasis here, which is really the resonance on the filter. If I click that, window comes up it tells me its number and now you can have your keyboard controller control it that's what remote means but I use this just to see here that it's assignable 22 okay so I know its number if I wanted to feed a CV in I could feed it in to assignable 22 by putting Assignable 22 right here. And then the CV1 in can be connected to something in reason that as a CV out, I don't have anything right now. Although I can add something. Let's put in a utility here. I'm going to put in.
about the matrix step sequencer. So by default, it's connecting the MIDI note. Well, yeah, the step CV and the step gate, these controls here, to the note in and the gate in on the modular. So if I hit this, we'll hear that repeated note. If I go to right here, the uh, curve mode, then I can draw in basically another parameter there. It's only going up eight steps here, so halfway here is all I need to draw. So now that that's in, if I hook this curve up to CV1 here, now we'll hear it. putting that curve into the emphasis for the resonance. I'm kind of hearing it there, but it's not standing out as much because cutoff filter is probably down right now because it's at that point in the step sequence. So I'm going to turn it up. I just hit the space bar that was going to play this and that would be going at the same time. And then when it goes beyond the loop, it doesn't have the other information there. Ooh, it's kind of cool hearing those MIDI notes collide with the uh, step sequencer there. Let's put this on loop and hear that again. But another thing you can do outside of setting these parameters here, I could turn this off by deselecting the parameter. And I can disconnect this here so that we're not doing the curve thing anymore. So I'll turn that off the view. But you can also do this in case you don't want to do it through some sort of CV from another device and reason. You can Go to your emphasis here, click automate, and then click emphasis. And now on the outside, it made a track lane here for your emphasis. So now I can draw it in here. Just create a box for it. Double click this open. Uh, Let's at least put in maybe down just so we can hear it up and then down again. Let's hear that. So anyway, Crafty likes that. That's his type of music. So anyway, you see there's a lot that can be done with this. If you'd like to know more about uh, SoftTube and Reason, I do have an electronic music production series, Learning Electronic Music Production with Reason. So if you want to learn more about Reason, that series will handle that. And if you'd like to know more about SoftTube, you can um, maybe leave a comment in the, the comment box below. And that'd be a signal for me to do other Sunday Night Synthesis episodes on it. Or maybe, you know, 
uh, do a special series on that. So anyway, I just thought I'd show this to you. Um, as you can hear, SoftTube has a pretty raw, realistic Eurorack module sound. Oh, I didn't show you. For example, if you want to add other modules, this is the basic package. So it comes with these here. Uh, Grundefler. And then IntelliGel is over here. But those are not in, as you can see, they're grayed out. But I have these two MIDI modules here. Um, I have the sequencers down here. These are different mixers, as they say. In effect here, this is a delay. And then you have um, quadraphonic MIDI input, so you can do four notes at a time with that and then a MIDI to trigger converter there this is a wrap around of these MIDI devices starting up here keeps putting the descriptions in the way MIDI devices here wrap around down to here so it comes with a bunch of things already and the prices on like some of the extra things that you might want to add um, are not not that bad actually a lot cheaper than your rack components. But anyway, everything that's kind of like highlighted here comes with it. But things that you might want to add, like the IntelliGel series and um, some other things like the Heartbeats percussion stuff here. It's pretty cool. Uh, but those are things that I have to earn more money before I can add. And that's going to take a while. So anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you next week on Sunday Night Synthesis.